Good morning, third graders. I hope you're doing well today. We are going to continue our reading of The Puppy Place, and we are beginning on page 105, chapter 10, The Puppy Place. I hope you enjoy this book. I'm really enjoying this book. The rest of that day passed much like the day before. Steve and Dad gathered sap and boiled it while Charles looked after the animals. He made sandwiches again at lunchtime and brought them out to the sugar shed. By late afternoon, it was obvious that Charles and Dad would be spending one more night at the cabin. Steve really needed their help. The next morning, Charles was giving Fluffy a bottle when he heard a groan from the kitchen. Oh no, said Steve. He smacked his head. I don't believe it. What happened? Charles asked. I just checked the calendar. That's what, said Steve. We've been so busy, I spaced it out. But this is Maple Open House weekend. That means today's the day of the spring fling wingding. Charles remembered that the spring fling was the annual party Dad had told him about on the way up. What's Maple Open House Weekend, he asked. Sugar houses all over the state invite visitors to stop by one weekend in March, Steve said. I just like to add to the fun by having a big party for my friends as well. Will people still come even with all this snow, Dad asked Steve. Steve laughed. By this time of year, Vermonters have what we call cabin fever from being stuck inside all winter. Everybody's happy to get out and do something different. They'll be here. He pulled the fridge open. I'm going to have to go shopping, he said, looking inside. There's barely enough food left for us, much less 20 other people. Doesn't everybody bring food to the party, Dad asked. Steve nodded, sure, but I like to have plenty on hand too. I was hoping you'd make your famous firehouse chili. I already bought the ingredients for that. Perfect, said Dad. Now that Charles is becoming a great chef, he can help me cook while you're shopping. We can tidy up the place too. Really? Steve asked, looking relieved. That would be excellent. As far as gathering snap and boiling, we can do that when everyone's here. People love to help out. It's part of the fun. The rest of the morning went by in a blur. Charles helped dad chop onions, open cans of beans, and add spices. He put away the sleeping bag and the blankets dad had been using and shook out the towels that Fluffy and Freckles had been sleeping on. In between, he gave Fluffy a bottle every time he began to bleat, took Freckles outside when he asked to be let out, changed the lamb's diaper, and tried to keep Fluffy from jumping onto the furniture he just dusted. By the time Steve came back, the cabin was tidy and a big pot of chili was bubbling away. Oh, it smells fantastic in here, said Steve, as he set bags of groceries on the counter. And it looks terrific too. I can't thank you two enough. People started arriving at lunchtime and Charles stayed busy passing out bowls of chili and helping to set out the rest of the food the guests had bought. Fluffy and Freckles greeted each guest happily, bouncing around like pinballs in a machine. As the afternoon went on and it began to warm up outside, the party moved to the sugar shack where Steve had started to boil sap. The food was spread out on a picnic table and people of all ages stood around to watch the sap boil while they caught up after the long winter. A couple of other dogs had arrived too, and Charles was happy to see that Freckles gave each of them a friendly greeting. Chloe arrived and Charles took her inside to see Fluffy. Wow, you've been doing a great job with this one, she said. He is really thriving. Charles smiled. He's a good eater, he told her. We're already almost out of formula. No problem, said Chloe. My last you had her lamb yesterday and all the babies are doing well. I'll be able to bring him home with me today now that I can take care of him. He needs to be back with the flock anyway. It's time he remembered that he's actually a sheep, not a puppy. Charles gulped. He'd known all along that Fluffy would be going back to the farm, but still, he was going to miss the little lamb and Freckles was going to miss his friend even more. But Chloe was right. Fluffy belonged with the other sheep. Speaking of puppies, said Charles as he ladled out a bowl of chili for Chloe, we're looking for a home for Freckles. He's really smart and great with lambs. Maybe you could use him on the farm. Charles had decided that Chloe's farm would be a perfect home for Freckles, and he'd been planning this speech all morning. 
That way he and Fluffy would always be together, he finished. Chloe ruffled Freckles' ears. Oh, I really wish I could. He's a real cutie and he'd be welcome to visit with us anytime. I, I already have Skye and Galena, my two sheepdogs. Between them and the sheep and the goats and the geese and ducks and chickens and my milk cow, I think my farm is just about full up. I didn't know you had all those animals, said Charles. I only saw the sheep the day we came to get Fluffy. Come visit before you leave, Chloe said. You can meet them all. Meanwhile, maybe Adelaide would be interested in the pup. After all, she fed him all winter while he lived in her barn. She and Charles walked outside, and Chloe pointed out a pretty white-haired woman with glasses. Charles took a plate of cheese and crackers and started to walk around, offering it to people. When he got to Adelaide, he smiled up at her. What do you think of Freckles, he asked. I know he was staying in your barn for a while. He looks good, doesn't he? Is that what you named the pup, she asked, taking a cracker? Great name, I love it. And yes, he looks great. Steve told me you've been taking really good care of him. I couldn't even get close to him when he was staying in my barn. He was too shy. He's not so shy anymore, said Charles. Freckles even likes hugs and belly rubs now. Sweet, said Adelaide. I'd love to pet him, but I'm so allergic that I'd be sneezing for the rest of the day. Charles sighed. He had just been about to ask Adelaide if she wanted to adopt Freckles, but now there was no point. Freckles really needs a home, said Charles. What about Steve, asked Adelaide. Steve? Charles was surprised. I thought he didn't want any pets. Adelaide laughed. Oh no, you're absolutely right about that. I can't imagine Steve with a dog. A very independent cat, maybe, but never a dog. No, I meant the other Steve, dancing Steve, that one. She pointed to a man with a big bushy beard and mustache. Dancing Steve, Charles asked. Adelaide laughed again. That's what we call him. He loves to go dancing and he does it whenever he can. Okay, Charles shrugged, so maybe dancing Steve wants a dog. He went to pick up a platter of deviled eggs to carry through the crowd, weaving this way and that until he was standing next to the man with the beard. All right, we're gonna stop right there in the middle of page 113. Thank you so much, third graders, and we'll continue tomorrow on page 113. Take care now, bye.